Okay, so I'm here now with Steve, who is the marine engineer down at Simpsons. We're out the back, we're tucked away, because he likes to work in peace. <laughs> Steve, what are you working on at the minute? Uh, we're working on a three litre uh, Mercruiser at the moment, um, that's got a slight um, fuel issue. Uh, okay. So we've had to strip the carb down, um, clean it all out. Uh, we've actually found the cause to be a breaking down fuel line. Broken down fuel yeah. line. So, obviously an inboard this one, uh, broken down fuel line. Steve, what's the... Um, What's the most common cause of problems you see in outboards or inboards when you get these boats in, you're checking them over? To be fair, a lot of the issues, I mean, outboards, inboards are actually quite reliable nowadays. Okay. Um, so most of the problems that come to us are actually fuel related. Fuel related, okay, yeah. so expand on that, so fuel related. Yeah, so obviously with the new fuel, everyone probably knows you've This got, is the E10. That's the E10, yeah. If you can run your boat on E5, obviously it is a lot better. Is it? So that's the, the, the I've heard a lot about that, the old E10 is cracking pipelines. That's it, Th yeah. There is truth in that. Yeah. Something to do with the ethanol content? Correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the ethanol, actually, when it breaks down fuel lines, uh, okay. certain rubbers, you need to make sure your fuel line is ISO rated. Okay. All right. Um, obviously when a lot of these boats were made, obviously E10 wasn't a problem. Okay. But E10, it's going to be E10 now, isn't it? it We're is going to be E10. Yeah. So, fuel-related problems. So, how, how can the everyday user prevent that? You know, how can we prevent these fuel problems? Not just the E10, yeah. but you've, you said beforehand, off-camera, that there was a lot of problems with fuel in general. Correct, yeah. Um, obviously, with E10, as I said before, it, um, it attracts moisture. Yeah. Okay? So, what you don't want is condensation in your tank, stuff like that. So, water in the tank. That's it. Cool. So, <clears throat> easiest way is... Either, if you can, take the tank home, mm -hmm. okay, brilliant. Obviously some boats, like yours, yep. obviously you can't, it's inboard. So if you've got, if you've got a, uh, a removable fuel tank, like the little red ones, that's it. take it home, keep it dry in the garage or whatever, don't that's leave it. it on the boat, rain, that sort of stuff. That's it, yeah, in a damp environment. And a seal tank, how will we solve that problem? A seal tank's a little bit more difficult. Um, the best thing is to put, put a fuel stabiliser in it. Okay. Uh, we recommend Quick Store. Quick Store, okay, okay cool. Quick Seal, Quick Store. Um, we use that on all of our service, our test tanks and stuff. Okay. Okay. like that obviously to try and prevent the only other thing is as i said iso fuel lines mm -hmm. um i'll show you a fuel line in a minute that's, yep, broken, that's broken down yeah um, i do what, what causes the issue is the fuel line breaking down and that's what normally goes into the carburetor yeah or the injection system and that's what normally causes failure so you said before that 70 percent of your problems that come in are yeah, fuel related yeah about 70 to 80 percent of problems nowadays are fuel related but well, there we go 70 to 80 percent of problems that come into the workshop is fuel related so if you can prevent that at home just by simply doing like steve said there look at your fuel lines add in your stabilizer or even if you've got those little portable tanks take it home and don't leave them outside and that goes for the jerry can storage of fuel i see it quite a lot of people storing fuel in their boats and leaving it there you're going to get ingress of the water so let's have a quick look at this fuel line that steve mentioned and we can show you that's e10 fuel in that was it e10 fuel, so let's yeah. have a look at this fuel line and see exactly what we're talking okay, about so this is an example of the fuel line that come off the uh off the vessel you can see the actual inner has started to crack and break down and you can actually see i don't know i'll show you better there it's actually started to come away from the outer there you go so the actual fuel was actually broken down the line causing it needed to be replaced awesome and then this is one of the new iso ones is it iso rated iso rated so as long as it's got an iso rating on it that'll be good for the new ethanol 10. so just quickly touching on the fuel lines there because actually it's a really good point and i've learned something is steve was talking about the iso rated lines preventing this ethanol, the, the E10 fuel issue. And Steve, you'd recommend getting lines changed so I bring my boat in for a service? Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I mean, it should be checked on a routine maintenance anyway, yeah. uh, which do it obviously every year or 100 hours, whichever comes yeah. sooner. Um, but yeah, that's definitely one thing you want to check. Um, obviously, if you catch it early, it's not as much of a problem. Because you're saying there, about, about £10 a metre for a new ISO fuel line, rated fuel line, if you... If you don't change that fuel line and it goes, we're looking at hours to strip a carburetor, yeah, carburetor more damage to the fuel system. Fuel injectors, you know, stuff so, like that. So maybe, uh, how, how, long's, how long's the average fuel line? I mean, anything from kind of two metres right up to kind of five metres, depending so, on the size of the vessel. Two to five metres of new full lot, fuel line, 10 metres, 10 pounds a metre, 50 quid, bit of labour maybe, let's just say 100 quid all in. 
if you don't and it breaks down and you've got all that bad fuel water and the rest of it running for, you know going right in we're talking hundreds of pounds for a pair aren't we well yeah yeah it's a lot lot of labor intensive work um to obviously take down the carburetor strip yeah. it down ultrasonic clean it okay um, put it back together you've got gaskets service yeah. kits stuff like that to add to it as well so um, and obviously, sorry, and obviously no like injectors, stuff like that, you know, they can be priced. So next time you have a service, it might be worth asking your engineer, like Steve, or whoever your one is in your local area, the cost to replace your fuel line to an uprated ISO fuel line. Because I'm probably going to do that now, next time I come in, if I need one, you've worked on yeah, my yeah, boat, we'll see. Yeah. Because the cost of getting a new one now, it might save you a whole lot of hassle later on. That's right? Yeah. Brilliant. That's Steve, Marine Engineer at Simpsons. Thanks, mate. Cheers, buddy. Have a good day.